welcome to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. We are traveling all over Uganda to find hardworking farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to make their farms more productive and adapt to climate change. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice and turn their farms around into a profitable business while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmer's experience on the Shamba Shape Up Uganda! Uganda. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. This week, we're going to learn the value of teamwork. But not only as people like you and me, Fro. Ah, but Agi. <laughs> we are one, like a well-oiled machine. Ooh. Well, sometimes maybe. But uh. do you know that plants can work in teams as well? And when they do, each member benefits from the other member. Let's go and see how teams can work on a farm. Because working together makes us stronger. <laughs> Let's team up. Let's go. <laughs> Today, we are in Wakiso district, north of the mighty city of Kampala. And we are visiting farmer Jamima Balisioi. Jamima has her daughter and her grandson visiting as well. He looks cute. Jamima's farm covers 20 acres. The main crops are coffee, bananas and maize. But look, she has rabbits too. So sweet. Hey, hey, Mama. Mama. I'm glad to see you. Yes. You are welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Jemima Barcio. Eh? We are in the right and place. And the farmer. Uh -huh. Ah, this is, this is the place. This is the place. Uh, so, how can we help you on your farm? We normally get banana bacteria wilt. Okay. Mm. Then, for coffee, we also have coffee bacteria wilt. Mm. Yes. And maize sometimes is attacked by weevils, mm. especially when we have harvested. Mm. Mm. Ah. Uh, Jemima, I've noticed that you have good trees. I don't know if, did you see the trees? Uh, yes. They are very beautiful. <laughs> Do you love planting trees? I would like to plant trees to demarcate my land. Mm. Oh. Because land grabbing mm. has become a problem mm. in this True. place. Mm. And once you plant a tree, it is permanent. Yes. So I would really want to plant them. Mm. Yes. No, 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 you don't have to worry, Jemima. Yes, because we don't come alone. Mm. We come with experts and we are sure. Uh, yes. That they are going to give yes. you all the help oh, that you need. That's yes. good. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Actually, let's go and call them. Mm. Then we'll come back. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> please do. Okay. Yeah. Okay, no, we'll, we'll be right back. Okay, please. Okay, all right. Yeah. So this is the first partnership I want us to discover today. Where agriculture meets the trees. Otherwise known as agroforestry. And to explain how intercropping trees with crops can bring benefits to both, I've asked tree expert Dr. Sarah Mutoni from National Agriculture Research Organization, NARO, to come and meet us. And I see she's bought some tree seedlings to show us. That's great. Now I'm going to take her to meet Jemima, who wants to plant mango trees to mark her farm boundary between her coffee plantation and the road. Is this a good idea? Oh, does Dr. Sarah have some other suggestions? Lady Jemima, we are here. I'm happy to see you. Good to see you too. Uh, this is uh, our expert, uh, Sarah. What do you have to say about mangoes demarcating the land? Mangoes are good. They're good fruit trees. But for this purpose, I can observe uh, coffee mm. and then bananas. Mm. So that means if you plant mangoes in this land, mm. they're going to present a lot of competition as a result of that wide crown, which presents wide uh, shade to the coffee and the bananas. So that means the yield is going to be very low from this land. There are other tree species that can do very well in the coffee and the bananas. Yeah. And, and Sarah, mm. yes. I know you brought some samples with you. Yes. Should we go and just look at them right now? Yes. Okay, so mangoes are not ideal planted close to coffee. So let's see what alternatives Dr. Sarah can suggest. Okay, sir. Yes. I can see you brought some seedlings with you. Tell us exactly what are these and why are they so good and important on the farm? I will start with this one. Okay. Mm. This one is called exotic emovole, mm. and it has many purposes on the farm. Mm. One, the way you see it becomes very big, so mm. it can be used for timber. Mm. It can be used for firewood. It can be used for boundary demarcation. Mm. Mm. 
Okay. Mm. Now, this small one, mm. this one is called Kaliandra. So Kaliandra has so many uses. It improves the soil fertility. You see these tiny leaves? Once they drop on the soil, they add nitrogen to the soil. Mm. The branches, they are used as firewood. Mm. It can be used as boundary and can be managed as a hedge. It is a shrub, not a tree. Mm. This Kaliandra can be used to feed animals. It is mainly for goats and cows. Non-ruminants like pigs, mm. those rabbits, it might be dangerous. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. We go to the next tree. Let okay. me go to this one. Okay. This tree is called Albizia zagia. But in Uganda, it is called Mugavu. Mugavu is good as a shade tree in yes. coffee and mm. bananas. Mm. Why? Its crown, it is not that heavy. It's not a thick crown, so it allows penetration of sun. These leaves, they drop and they mm. can rot very fast. Mm. So they improve the soil fertility. The other use is that it can act as a windbreak if it is planted along the boundary. Mm. This same tree can provide firewood. It can also be used for timber. So it has so many uses, from soil improvement, to timber, to shade, to firewood. Wow, wow. Doctor, thank you so much for that information. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. So Jemima confirmed she wants to switch from mango to planting albizia on her boundary as it provides so many benefits to her coffee and bananas. So now, let's see how to do it. Ah, good Karis has already made a start clearing the land. So the first job is to mark the planting holes. We want each tree to be spaced five meters apart and in a straight line. Make sure none of the planting holes are close to any coffee or banana trees. Dig the holes 30 centimeters wide and 30 centimeters deep. Measure a stick to act as a guide. Once that's done, fill the hole back up using the first top soil. The top soil is better for the seedling. Next, unwrap the seedling and crush the soil around the roots lightly to free them up. Plant the seedling into the loose top soil and cover. Add some mulch, but make sure it doesn't touch the stem of the plant so pests don't transfer to the seedling. Finally, make a cage around the seedling to help protect it and water. Yay! Agroforestry is one of the best practices. You know, all farmers want to make money. So you can make money in agroforestry. That is great. Jemima will not only have trees providing a boundary to her farm, but the same trees will boost her coffee production. And I love coffee. Frobs, I bet you cannot beat that. Well, Agi, I think I can. But how? With Uganda's favorite dish, matoke. <laughs> what can be nicer? Jamima has six acres of bananas and coffee intercropped. However, I could see some signs of pest and disease. So I asked banana expert, Dr. Godfrey Seru, to come give us some advice. Oh, doctor. Yes, please. So you've been inspecting our yeah, plantation? I've been uh, looking around. Okay. So mm. what have you noticed? Yeah, I've uh, moved around and seen some effects of the weevil, banana weevil. Okay. When you look at this, mm. that yellowing is uh, as a result of weevils. Oh. You can see it's even weak. Okay. How you identify that it's a weevil? The plant breaks from this joint. Oh. It topples, it breaks from there. But now this is the effect of a weevil. They have really done damage, done damage to the plant. <laughs> okay. Mm. But now, if you go into a plantation and you see black ants mm. digging around the plant, mm. the black ants are the friends to a farmer. They help her to know that there are weevils inside. Oh. Those black ants come to eat the larvae of the weevil. Oh, and so okay. once you see them around, yes. just to know you have weevils. weevils. Okay, are there any other problems? 
the nematode. Nematodes, mm. yes. Yeah, now, unlike the weevil, yes. the nematode, it eats up the roots. And then the entire plant, including the comb, oh, will come out come and out fall of down. Okay. How do we control these pests? You get clean or pest-free suckers. Once you uproot, you have to do what we call pairing. Chop off all the black until the comb remains white. white. Uh, okay. Then you can dip it in an insecticide, just in case there are eggs. Okay. Then you plant. After planting, if you have an insecticide like a doodoo guard, you can apply at a rate of 200 mils in 20 liters of water. Okay. Oh, so you mix it and you pour it around the root region here, so that if there are any weevils, they will be able to die. Now the nematodes we can use, the doodoo guard I talked about, using the same rate. Mm. Then I've seen another problem. Mm. We have Sigatoka. Sigatoka. Mm. And then Sigatoka, how can we identify Sigatoka? The black Sigatoka is uh, a fungal disease. It affects the plant, mm. but mainly it manifests on the leaves. Uh -huh. The leaves begin drying yeah. from the edges inwards. inwards. Okay. And now this is severe state of the black Sigatoka. All the leaves have dried yes. before the banana has matured. Now the effects of this is mm. the, the bunch will be smaller Compared than to the, uh, oh. uh, the usual size because they didn't get enough food, food. to feel. This black Sigatoka becomes so severe mm. in cases of very low soil fertility. But uh, now once you improve your fertility, mm. gradually, mm. it will go. Madam Jemima, how have you been doing it? Now I think the plantation became a bit big <laughs> and the manure was not enough. Yeah. My advice to the farmers mm. is um, don't plant a very big garden. Yes. Plant a small, small. garden which you can be able to fully manage. Okay. Uh, because once it's big, it requires a lot of labor. Yes. The inputs required will be a lot, and then mm. the output may be low. Now here, if you don't have enough manure, you can get the inorganic fertilizer. Mm. Now there are certain blended fertilizers, specifically mm. made for banana. Okay. You can look for okay. those. Mm. With the cigatoka, mm. it will be managed once you improve the nutrition. The nutrition. Mm. Thank you very much, Dr. Godfrey. That's uh, very important uh, information. But now, let's break it down, down to the details. Nematodes and weevils are best controlled by first using clean planting material and then applying an insecticide like Dudugad. Diseases like Sigatoka can be avoided by adding manure and fertilizer to increase soil nutrition. To avoid problem spreading, remove all the diseased leaves and burn them away from the farm. Now, Jemima has her own manure heap, so if she has a smaller area to look after, there will be enough healthy soil to feed all the bananas. Hey, Frog. Wait. What's up with the teamwork? Oh, Agi. Hmm? I've got my bananas to team up with the good soil and manure so that we can get a bumper harvest. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Team what? Teamwork! And there's still more to come after the break. We are going to find out how to combat coffee diseases and how to store maize without losses. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. We're in Wakiso district and we're visiting Jemima Barisioi. Still to come. Getting rid of pests in the coffee plantation. And how to store a maize. So let's not waste any time. See you later. That way? This way. This way. Okay, that way. <laughs> After water, coffee is the world's favorite drink. So farmers should get the best price, but only if they can get rid of pests and diseases. Let's find out how. Here to spill the beans is coffee expert Andrew Magombe. Andrew! Hello. Ah, he's here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Right. Are there any issues you have or challenges with your coffee? I normally see a branch beginning to dry up. 
mm -hmm. leaves like this one. And when I, I try to break like this, mm -hmm. I normally see some black, black insects inside. Okay, first of all, uh, this is a pest. The pest is the black coffee twig, twig boiler. Boiler. You will see a small hole on the twig mm. or on the branch. Then when you break, mm. you will see the larvae or the eggs and the, some adults are there in the tunnels. Okay. And obviously, it shows by the branches drying, these drying leaves. Mm -hmm. So there you have identified it. To control this, the first thing is that uh, this black of twig borer is favored by conditions of too much shade, either within the plant itself mm -hmm. or shade from the intercrops and the trees you have planted in yes. the garden. And now in line with that, one, when you see the infected twigs, mm -hmm. prune them mm -hmm. and burn. You prune them with this machine, a secateur. Mm -hmm. Make sure you disinfect your tools. We use spirit or jig. You need to remove the suckers. These are growths that are ex extra, they are not required. Mm -hmm. They are called the suckers. You have to remove them to allow light penetration. Then this pest is also harbored by some trees. For example, in your garden, I can see this one. This is Musambia, Makamia. Mm -hmm. In English, it's Makamia. The Musizi and the Ovakedo. These trees that harbor the pests, mm. we remove them. Mm. We recommend that you plant shady trees mm. that do not harbor the pest. Mm. One, Omutuba or Ficus. Then there is a Albizia, Coraria, that is Omugavu. Mm, yes. That one is very, very good. Mm. Then also, if you are intercropping your coffee with other crops, don't put too many intercrops. What is the space I'm supposed to, to have between banana and coffee? For every four plants of coffee, mm. you need one banana. A robusta coffee is 10 feet by 10 feet. Yes. And banana is 20 feet by 20 feet. Mama Jamaima, do you have any other problems that you've noticed in your coffee? Mm, there are some cases mm. which are there which I don't understand. Yeah, you see a uh, stem drying all of it. Come and show us more. Okay, show us. you take us. We better look, have a look at it and we can <laughs> and, and, okay. and and cure it before. Okay, now let's see if we can find that tree. Ah, now, oh dear, this one doesn't look good. This one is coffee wilt disease. Coffee wilt. It's a fungal disease, it has no cure. Can easily destroy the whole of your garden. The whole tree, like you have seen, mm. dries tip of the plant starts wilting or yellowing and then the whole plant progressively dries like mm. you have seen now. Mm -hmm. oh. But fortunately it is manageable. When you see symptoms of coffee root, don't wait. Uproot the whole plant with the roots, chop it, then burn. Ideally you're supposed to burn from that hole we have uprooted. Mm -hmm. Gather even these fallen leaves and branches, burn. There you have eliminated the disease. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Then it too, how is it spread? The biggest spread is by the farmer and the workers mm. through the implements. Yes. When you cut this tree and you go to another tree, you are spreading. Whenever you are working in your coffee garden, ensure that you disinfect your tools before and after working on a coffee plant. Third, when you are gap filling or replanting, Use resistant coffee robusta varieties. Mm. We have KR1 up to 10. I've been in coffee for 20 years. <laughs> Such information is very new to some of us. Our friends, the Shamba, Shape Up, mm. should give us more and more of this information, advisory oh. services. Okay. Once we are informed, yes. I think we can start doing it. Uh, okay. okay, better late than never. <laughs> than never. <laughs> Thanks to Shamba Shape Up. Yes. The coffee technical man did his good part. He did a great job. And I hope and I'm sure I'm going to practice the same to have a better yield and quality, quality production. So you want to store your crops and sell when the market price is high. But you know poor storage will destroy your crops. Do you want to know how you can store without losses? Well... You're in luck. 
because we've invited Dr. Godfrey Seru from National Agricultural Research Organization, NARO, to come back and tell us all about how best to store maize. And judging by the look of the maize store, I think Jemima is going to find out a lot of new information. But let's start at the beginning. Uh, Dr. Godfrey, why is it a good idea for one to store maize? Sometimes when we have a bumper harvest, the prices go low, very low, up to 500 shillings. If you don't mm. store and sell at that time, you are not going to make any profits. Mm. But once you store, most of the people have sold, then the prices begin going up. Then you sell at a, a high price mm. and make some very good money. I see. So, I advise even other people to store. They should. Mm. But see. if they are to store, then they should do it the right way. Are you trying to say something here, like this is not the right way or what? The method of storage is not very good. If you decide to leave it on the cobs, then it should have been put on a tarpaulin to avoid contamination. Mm -hmm. But now here on the bare ground, the chances of it getting contaminated are very, very high. This kind of storage exposes it to rodents. Mm -hmm. Then the way it was sorted at harvesting, it may end up contaminating our store. For example, you see we call this maize ear rot. They have two types. The red one mm -hmm. is called Fusarium moniliform. Then this one is the Stenocapella. They are both ear rots, but uh, caused mm -hmm. by different pathogens. Now, this one, the effect came from the field. If you keep it in the store, mm. it's where the aflatoxin comes in. Uh, doctor, what is aflatoxin? It's a toxin, as you hear. Yes. W once it attacks the maize, it causes this kind of mold, which is very dangerous to human health mm -hmm. and even to animals. And if you give it to an animal, still that aflatoxin can be traced even in the milk or in the meat. Yeah. So now, mm. I've also observed that with this kind of storage, do you see these holes? Yes, yes. It's a result of weevils. Mm. So now the weevils are already in there. The mm. population has not yet built up, but with the time as you store one month, two months, you'll come and find everything, destroyed. everything is destroyed. How best can she save this that she already put down here? The first thing she must do is to sort. Remove okay. whatever looks like sort. this mm. and throw it away and only remain with the good one. Mm -hmm. And it is that good one that she's going to shell it. Yeah. If she wants to store for a long time, a long time, four months to a year and even beyond a year, she has to use what we call the hermetic bag, what we call the pix bag. Uh, Lady Jemima, yes, please. now that the doctor has explained all this, mm -hmm. would you like us to come in and do a few things to shape up your store? I would be very grateful. Thank you, Jemima. Thank you so much, Doctor. This was a lot of information and very useful too. So now, let's take a deep dive down to the details. Successful long-term storage means first, sort the maize so that all the damaged cobs are removed. Then separate the corn from the cob. Threshing can damage the maize, so a better option is to use a hand sheller. This can be time consuming but gives much better quality and the grains are not damaged. Then dry the maize in the sun. Remember to use a tarpaulin to keep it clean. The maize has to have a moisture content of less than 14% before it can be stored. So, if you don't have a moisture meter, this simple test works well. Place the maize in a clean, dry jar and add salt. Shake well. Then check to see if any salt has stuck to the glass. If it has, the maize needs to dry for longer. Finally, store the maize in a hermetic bag, also called a pix bag. This bag has two plastic airtight liners inside. Make sure they are undamaged. Fill the bag with the maize and tie the top very tight. The bag will be airtight so any weevils still inside will die. Okay, now Carissa and I have just about finished making the platform to store the maize, so we can start to transfer the pig's bags. 
good and we are just about finished. Let's see what Jemima thinks about our makeover. Come on in, Frob. Ta-da! Hey! <laughs> So what, wow. is, what is here? Yeah, you see what we did? Mm. We made this pallet that allows air to easily flow in uh -huh. and out. Uh -huh. And we moved it away from the wall. Okay. No rodents. Okay. We okay. used these airtight bags mm. whereby the grains are kept fresh for up to 12 months. No need of pesticides. I'm so surprised. Uh -huh. I'm seeing something very new. Uh -huh. huh? I can't believe it, ah. what I'm saying. It happens. But unfortunately, Mama, we have to leave. <laughs> As for you back home, we'll see you on the next episode of Shamba Sheba Uganda!